Today we're going to be looking at another heavily requested Hacksmith Industries video. Specifically, we're going to be looking at a real arc reactor from Iron Man, or an ionized plasma generator. <laughs> He's using it to charge his phone. Hmm. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't quite know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's check this out. That is a lot of arcing right there. Mm. All right, let's see. Does that open up and you got your hand, hand with a ring on it that close to something that is arcing? Wow. <laughs> so what exactly is an arc reactor? Well, it was first introduced to the MCU in Iron Man. And just looking at it, it looks like it produces a continual arc of electricity in a loop. And some This kind of looks like a tokamak fusion reactor in that you just have plasma generated between a bunch of magnets. And what the plasma does is it's a significant heat source. The plasma heats up a bunch of hydrogen, makes it hot enough so they could fuse into helium. Now, for fusion to occur, you need three basic things. One is confinement time. So you see this structure that would be kind of similar to that. And that's why you have the magnetic, you have all the magnets arranged to basically keep the plasma in, in there. Now there, because plasma is electrically charged, well, you just use the electromagnetic forces from the magnets to keep it confined. Another thing you need is a lot of temperature. Plasma gets very hot. To give you a sense of how hot, upwards of 100 million degrees Celsius, which is considerably hotter than the core of the sun at a mere 15 million degrees Celsius. That brings us to the third thing, which is pressure. The sun's got all that gravity, so they can get away with a relatively cold temperature of 15 million. But here we're relying on, again, electromagnetic forces that are powerful, but nothing compared to the gravity of the sun. So that's why it, it's, it's at a higher temperature. But as far as, as far as an arc reactor, something that big clicking, causing all kinds of electrical arcs, I don't want to be anywhere near that thing because arc flashes are incredibly destructive, can blow up an electrical switch gear, and <laughs> let's see what they have to say. Now, that generates power. Infinite power. To me, it kind of <laughs> looks like a perpetual energy device, which we know is impossible because the most yep. fundamental law of physics is the conservation of energy, which states that energy in a closed system is constant, which means energy cannot be created, only transformed. That simplifies into an equation. What he means by closed system is basically everything isolated within that environment. You'd have to put work on the system from something outside of the system, such as heating it up from the sun as well, can be another source of energy. But here, now we're talking about an isolated system, and that is absolutely correct. Energy in equals energy out plus losses, usually in the form of heat. Because of the second law of thermodynamics, we know there are always losses. Always. Which kind of makes yes. sense when Obadiah says this. The arc reactor, that's a publicity stunt. It's a publicity stunt. It's a publicity stunt. We built that thing to shut the hippies up. It works. Yeah, as a science project. But then, in the cave, it when still Tony looks like a fusion reactor, reactor even though it's not palladium. What is that? That's palladium. 0.15 grams. Which suggests the arc reactor might actually be nuclear technology, since some palladium is radioactive. Okay, that's a bit like saying um, using a bi biomass reactor that uses bananas is nuclear technology because bananas contain radioactive potassium. Now, mainly when I think of palladium, I think of applications in electronics, which, I mean, here you're dealing with electrical arcs. I mean, you could use palladium. Kind of expensive. So, yeah, electronics, um, catalytic converters, and it's very expensive, which is one of the reasons why there's that if people want to break into your car and steal something, they'll try to steal your catalytic converter because it apparently sells, sells well at chop shops. Not that I would know this from personal experience, but I know that's, uh, that's something you have to watch out for if you ever leave your car at a parking ride. And it's a shiny metal. We like shiny metal, so it's used in jewelry. <laughs> it's no more nuclear technology than a banana is nuclear technology. Carcinogenic and toxic, so I'm not about to play with palladium. 
Ooh, uh, if you want to check out my reaction to the uh, radioactive boy scale, I'll uh, pin it in the comment down below. Yeah, that was crazy. For fictional technology. Now, the power output specified is also kind of ridiculous. But what could it generate? If my math is right, I don't know what it is. Three gigajoules per second. Gigajoules? Per so, also, you would just say three gigawatts. So three gigawatts is, that's about the thermal power of the nuclear power plant I worked at. It was actually more like 3.8, but 3.8 thermal or about 1.4 on the grid from a generator. Mentioned heat losses. Yeah, in a steam cycle, you have a lot of those. That's comparable to a nuclear power plant. A joule per second is just a fancy scientific way of saying a single watt. Sounds pretentious. Which means the arc reactor produces three gigawatts of power. That's almost three times the power output of a time-traveling DeLorean from Back to the Future. But I need a nuclear reaction to, to generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity. 1.21 oh, gigawatts! <laughs> I also did a reaction to that saying. If you want to see how plausible that is, I'll uh, pin that in the comment below. In fact, if we were to sell that energy back to the power grid the same way I sell solar energy from my roof, it would be the equivalent of 833 kilowatt hours. 833 over what period of time? Yeah, it, it would not take you very long to generate 833 kilowatt hours with a three gigawatt power source. <laughs> generate $250 per second of income oh, per or second point six okay. million dollars yeah. per day basically if I were to invent a real working arc reactor all of our funding issues would be solved and we'd be well on our way to building a real-life Iron Man suit or is he gonna have this count up the entire, entire video? company would be assassinated by the big oil companies so it's pretty much impossible to make a real working arc reactor so let's build a real working arc reactor all right, now before we build the arc reactor, let's take a look at a 3D model using some augmented reality tech, not unlike Tony Stark himself. Pretty cool, right? Let's take that a actually look. is really cool. Now, it looks like the electricity is being generated in the final ring of the assembly. But I guess the real question is, if we're building an arc reactor, how are we going to do that? Let's get some paper out and actually I do just some see calculations spinning by stuff. Hand. Now, it takes approximately 3 million volts to ionize air for an arc to form across a distance of 1 meter. That's roughly 30,000 volts. That is a massive arc. Give you a sense of uh, arcs, um, you actually can create a small one just with static electricity, though not at a meter, talking on the order of millimeters. So that, that feeling, that annoying feeling when it's when the humidity drops and you touch and you touch something that gives you a nasty shock. Yeah, you're actually making a really tiny arc. Said high voltage doesn't kill you because it's such a brief, because it is such a brief period of time. Centimeter. So with a 24.1 centimeter travel path, we'll need approximately 723,900 volts of electricity. Luckily, we have these little high voltage transformers which produce about 80,000 volts each. There's 10 segments in the arc reactor. Cool. So that would be about 800,000 volts. This might actually work. Let's start assembling it. Okay, no, don't, anything just sparking like that. <laughs> <laughs> need to put some protective covering on it or something, man. They do need to be close together, so I might thicken up that divider wall. Yeah, that'd be good. These wires get hot. It smells nice. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I think it might be acrylic, but... Most realistic arc reactor ever. Yeah. Yeah, so these wires, they're not very thick, but like if they're next to each other, they don't arc, as long as there's something else there. So I'm wondering how thick the wires I need carrying the high voltage. That's interesting, because you're going to create something that arcs, but you don't want it to, to destroy all of your wires and your other little electrical components that you're trying to use with it. Yeah, there's a reason why when you build a lot of things, you design them to not have arcs. Near my body. The challenge. See? Perfectly safe. As long as you don't become the path of least resistance, you'll be fine. <laughs> That's exactly right, because, yeah, just like any other electrical safety briefing, you do not want to be the path of least resistance. You do not want to be the thing that completes the circuit. It's interesting seeing all these guys work without gloves or 
even safety glasses or, or anything. Uh, what I'm used to at nuclear plants and other facilities that, yeah, there's a lot, a lot more emphasis on, on PPE. If it was actually producing that much electricity, you'd need some serious uh, current carriers to get that energy somewhere useful. It's been a while since I saw the Iron Man movie, but I don't remember it clicking and making that kind of stuff. But yeah, you can you can definitely make arcs into some death hula hoop thing. I know these guys are knowledgeable. It's no different than watching, say, Styropyro or Electro Boom when they do all these crazy, crazy things with things. I know they know their stuff, but it's still, even if you do it, it's... <laughs> it, it's taken me some get a to get my head around making arcs on purpose and um, not having PPE when you're when you're working with them. Again, that's that's just what I'm used to, and I'll fully acknowledge my own bias. It's Iron Man. Now they're making the full scale version. satisfying to watch. It's just interesting to watch just with glue and a bunch of just wires being a bunch of thick things going into this one little small item. It's uh it's fascinating. It, it really is. Now what I want to know is how they went with if going from something that looked like a fictional fusion reactor type thing to some crazy electrical spider cylinder looking thingy that constantly makes arcs and clicking noises. Proof that Tony Stark has a heart. <laughs> Why are they ending stuff over it? I mean, it's it's crazy enough by itself. <laughs> it's all the crazy arcs. Uh, gotta love Hacksmith. They they sure love the theatrics behind it. All right, so we've got the arc reactor all set up, and all we right. have a clamp meter to measure the current flowing through the wires as we do a startup sequence. Nice. <laughs> Three, six, eight, nine. All right, so obviously I don't have a hole in my chest, so I can't actually wear this arc reactor. So I thought it'd be nice to make a nice kind of like display case that we can use for when we're actually powering stuff using the arc reactor. All right, so we've got the arc reactor in its box now, and we've actually- And this thing in the movie supposedly generates three gigawatts. They must have found something way more dense in terms of energy source than even, than even uranium, or plutonium, or thorium, or hydrogen, deuterium, and tritium they use to do fusion. Because that's, that's a lot in a very, a very small area. The switch is on the box, so let's open it up. All right, so main power is this switch here. And we'll try and do a startup sequence. That would be so cool to have something like that, that, that portable. Smallest nu uh, miniature nuclear reactors are about there where they could fit into the back of a uh, semi truck and there you're just talking one to 10 megawatts. So whatever fictional world technology this is that would be that would be really cool now that's cool seeing the blues and the whites 
all these different colored things, so they definitely make it look like the thing in the show. Alright, let's see if it can power a phone. <laughs> to give you a sense of what it would actually take to power your phone, we're talking on the order of single digit watts. <laughs> sure. Was that phone dead when it started, or was that a rapid charge, or was it already 100% charged? All right, let's see what else is in power. All right, so we're here at the main circuit breaker for my house, and we're gonna plug in the arc reactor. Oh, oh, mmm. <laughs> All right, let's turn it on and see what happens. Wait, so you're just gonna plug it in, or did you turn everything off first? You're going to try to power the house with it? Alright, so these are the power meters for the house, and as you can see, uh, that's how many kilowatt hours we're using. Alright, let's reconnect it to the grid. <laughs> Alright, so obviously it's not actually producing enough power to do anything useful, but it's <laughs> Okay, okay. <laughs> so, not, so not much. It definitely looks, definitely looks and sounds like it, but yeah. Uh... Big difference in stepping up between even being able to charge your phone and being able to power your house on the order of a few individual watts to a few thousand. And that's just a typical, a typical house with them with all their crazy equipment. They might be into the, uh, into the tens or even hundreds of kilowatts if they're trying to power a bunch of machines. They did the part in terms of making it look like the real thing, kind of like what they did with the, uh, with the lightsabers in a, in a previous video I reacted to. It's still really cool, and I really admire what these guys can do, and just getting it to look like the thing. The thing, and plus, getting people curious about crazy energy sources, even fictional ones, is awesome. I enjoy seeing this sort of stuff on YouTube. Thanks so much for the recommendation, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.